Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com. Back at it again like Daniel. Thursday, May 30th, 2019. I hope you're having a good summer. Thanks for staying with us during these long, boring summer months. My goodness, when is football season going to get here? What is it, 93 more days till Alabama and Duke? That's a long time. We got you covered right here at BamaInsider.com. Today, we are talking about what is Alabama's biggest weakness Going into the 2019 season. That's our 19 for 19. What is a 19 for 19? Well, we're asking 19 hard-hitting questions into the 2019 season. And today, what is Alabama's biggest weakness? Sound off in the comment box. Holler at me on email at Kyle at BamaInsider.com. On Twitter at Rivals underscore Kyle. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. But all the coverage back at BamaInsider.com or right here on our YouTube channel. So thanks for subscribing. Be sure and give us a thumbs up and share this page with your fellow Alabama Crimson Tide football basketball fans. We got a chance to hear Nate Oates speak yesterday as well. I will dive into the new basketball roster in the second half of the show. But as I said, today we are going to open the show. We're talking about Alabama's biggest weaknesses or potential biggest weaknesses for the 2019 season. Here's an excerpt from Tony Sukalis' article running today on BamaInsider.com. And again, as I always say, if you're a college student and you want the college promo, email me, Kyle at BamaInsider.com. If you want free 30 days, same thing. Email me, Kyle at BamaInsider.com. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love an opportunity to earn your business. Depth at linebacker. Is that a potential weakness for Alabama? Alabama fans don't need or probably don't want to be reminded of the team's injury history at the linebacker position over the last two seasons. However, for the sake of this article, here's a list of all the linebackers who missed at least one game during that span. 2017, stay with us. Terrell Lewis, elbow, missed 10 games. Christian Miller, bicep, missed 10 games. Rashawn Evans, growing, missed two games. Anthony Jennings, ankle, missed two games. Sean Deion Hamilton, fractured kneecap, missed five games. Season ending. Mac Wilson, foot, missed two games. Dylan Moses, foot, missed two games. Last season, 2018, Terrell Lewis, ACL, missed the entire season. Christopher Allen, ACL, missed the entire season. Christian Miller, hamstring, missed one game, season ending. My goodness, so many injuries to the linebacking unit. What is going on? Is that just bad luck? Or is there something deeper? Is it, you know, perhaps how these guys are being trained? I don't know. Um, I would never throw shade at Scott Cochran, but what is going on with all these injuries at linebacker? I mean, that could be a potential weakness for this team, who's a juggernaut, obviously, on defense with so many guys returning, especially the outside linebacker position. I'm curious myself to see how Terrell Lewis holds up. I see that We're probably going to talk about that narrative the entire summer until it's completely played out. Hopefully, he comes against Duke and just completely balls out. And so we can stop talking about it. But he posts all the time on Instagram, on social media. And he's, I mean, yesterday I saw him dunking, which looked positive. But he still doesn't look like he could be moving around 100%. Good news is a guy like Yabi Anoma is back there. Good thing is at the inside linebacker position, there looks to be some youthful depth, right? Um, currently, I guess if the season wants to start, would it be Dylan Moses and Joshua Millen at the inside linebacker position? Or perhaps could it be... Freshman Shane Lee or even Ali Kaho. I don't know. Um, there's depth at the linebacker position and even Anthony Jennings returns to the 2019 season. I think a guy that we don't really talk enough about for Alabama's defense. Thanks for joining us today on the show. My name is Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, all the same, BamaInsider.com. Join the Talk of Champions message board. It's a premium message board with thousands of Alabama Crimson Tide football fans, all opinionated, as you could guess, <laughs> talking about everything under the sun, um, football, basketball, best place to eat in Alabama. It's all happening on the Talk of Champions. Here's another potential weakness for Alabama during the 2019 season. Another excerpt from Tony Sukalis' article today on BamaInsider.com. Two big losses on the defensive line. Replacing talent across the defensive line has become a rite of passage for the Alabama Crimson Tide in recent offseasons. Last year, there was questions over how the Crimson Tide could replace Deron Payne. Before that, it was Jonathan Allen or Ashawn Robinson or Jaron Reed. Alabama never missed a step. While history, as well as talented roster, suggests that Alabama should continue its trend of reloading up front, doing so will still be a tall task. 
the Crimson Tide loses two of its three starting defensive linemen and Outland Trophy winner Quinnen Williams and Isaiah Bugs. The duo combined for 17 and a half sacks with 33 tackles for a loss last season. To put that into perspective, the sacks were 38.8% of Alabama's total, while the tackles for loss made up 30.8% of the team's final tally. Alabama brings back a valuable starter in Raekwon Davis, who could very well be the Crimson Tide's next lineman to take in the first round of the NFL Draft in 2020. LeBron Ray should also finally get an opportunity to show his talents on a regular basis. It's also worth noting that unlike last year, Alabama is better equipped to deal with the departures due to its depth after bringing in several very talented defensive linemen in this year's recruiting class, right? You guys, you have DJ Dell, who enrolled in December of 2018. You have Ismail Sopcher, who's getting here this week, I believe. And then you have Byron Young, who's also slated to get here this summer. So there is plenty of depth at the defensive tackle position. It just might be a little bit younger than we're accustomed to. The third aspect that could be a weakness to Alabama's 2019 season is a loaded back schedule. Another excerpt from Sukalas' article on BamaInsider.com. At first glance, Alabama's schedule doesn't appear too daunting. Duke is a far step from some of the neutral side opponents the Crimson Tide has matched up with against in recent years. Things are a bit underwhelming after that as well. You have Southern Miss, New Mexico State, Ole Miss, Arkansas, right? Those are the teams in Alabama's front section of the schedule. A week six trip to Texas A&M could prove tricky. However, a quirk in the schedule allows both teams to have a bye week headed into that game. Alabama hasn't lost a regular season game in which it's had an extra week to prepare since its infamous 9-6 overtime loss to LSU in 2011. Chances are the meat of Alabama's schedule will once again fall in the month of November as the Alabama Crimson Tide hosts LSU before traveling to Mississippi State and Auburn with a cupcake date with West Carolina in between. If Alabama makes it out of that, it will likely face another matchup with Georgia and then possible trip to the college football playoff game once again. What do you think? Sound off in the comment box. What do you think Alabama's biggest weakness will be during the 2019 season? Yes, they're, they're completely loaded on both sides of the ball, but every year there seems to be one Achilles heel. What is that going to be this year for the Crimson Tide? I'd love to hear from you in the comment box. Hey, college students, again, hit me up for that college promo. Kyle at BamaInsider.com is my email. You can also hit me up on Twitter, Rivals underscore Kyle. Be sure and give our team account a follow at BamaInsider.com. And of course, all the coverage back at BamaInsider.com. Now, I wanted to talk to you about Alabama basketball coach Nate Oates. He provided some very insightful comments yesterday during the SEC spring meetings down in Destin, Florida. And I wanted to play a couple clips because he talked about not only players facing adversity and the transfer situation, which is very much a hot topic ac across the landscape of college athletics. But he also gave us a taste of the incoming roster. Here's that clip from Nate Oates talking about players facing adversity. And then we'll read a little bit about the returning scholarship players and some new additions for the Crimson Tide's 2019-2020 team. Here's Nate Oates. You just got to be aware of the fact that guys have the ability to leave more and it's more in culture and they've got more people in their ear that are telling them to leave as soon as there's any adverse situation so I think you have to build into them and teach them and build the character that look in life in general you're going to have adversity hit you if every time you have adversity hits you you run from it we're not really helping you grow as men so you got to teach them it's coming it's going to come during the year and I think you see that with some of the kids that left us we weren't their first school so, I mean, some guys are going to go now play for their third and fourth coaches. So at some point, you can't run from adversity every single time. There's a little bit of adversity in your life. Oates also talked about some new additions to this roster. Um, a name I really love, Beetle Bolden, who transfers to Alabama, and then James Rojas, who is a very skilled and multidimensional player. Here's Oates talking about some new additions to the roster and what he likes so far with the returning nucleus of the Crimson Tide, already scholarship members. You know what, I mean, a lot of the culture of the program comes with how you run it on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, how we want to play, you know, 
getting more guards. We like to play faster, getting guys that are more suited to playing that way. Yeah, we, we tried and we need to get more shooting. We like to play with the four spread a lot more. And you can spread your guys out as far as you want, but if they can't shoot, the defense isn't <laughs> spread out with them. So it doesn't do you any good. So we, we you know, we added Beetle Bolden who can really shoot. We, uh, you know, we've gotten some athletes that, that can run a little bit. And uh, James Rojas is a really skilled four that can kind of be multidimensional. He's a tough kid. I think we need to add a little bit of toughness, and he's a winner. So, you know, we, we added some pieces. But, again, part of it, too, is just teaching these guys how we want to play. Like, in, we had three weeks, and I thought we got a great head start in three weeks. And we're going to get eight weeks in the summer. We'll get eight more weeks to really start to build in how we want to play and our pace and our style. And they had some really good pieces here for how we want to play. I mean, Herb Jones in transitions is as good as any wing you're going to find when you get him going in transition. The floor's open and spread. And Kyra Lewis is one of the fastest point guards in the country. John Petty can really shoot. And we need shooting to space the floor like we like to space. Alex Reese is a big that can space the floor and shoot. All right, so let's look at Alabama's basketball roster and who's returning. We'll start with the scholarship returners. You have Kyra Lewis Jr., who's a point guard, a very electric player. Last year he was an SEC all-freshman, had 13.6 points per game, played in 31.6 minutes per game. Um, very talented player. He's only 18 this coming year. John Petty is a guard. He'll be a junior. Um, you know, very he's a hot and cold, obviously, from beyond the arc, but averaged 10.2 points last year, shot 34.5% from beyond the arc. You have Herbert Jones returning. Um, he'll be a he'll be a junior. 6'7, 206 pounds. He took 17 charges last season, 32 steals, and had 20 blocks. Alex Reese, big man, 6'9, 238 pounds, really likes to shoot. From the outside, 37.5% from beyond the arc. Galen Smith should see more of a role with Dante Hall now out of the picture. Six foot nine, 245 pounds. Javion Fleming, you see that picture he posted on social media recently? Last year, played at 283 pounds, right? He didn't, he didn't play. I mean, he, he practiced. He redshirted last year. He looks chiseled now at 253 pounds. All right, these are the recent departures from the roster. Tevin Mack, as you saw, entered the NCAA transfer portal. And then Deontay Wood, who transferred to Jacksonville University. Incoming freshman, Jawan Gary, forward. He was the highest rated member of Alabama's 2019 class. And he could be a potential instant impact player. Six foot five, 200 pounds. You have Jalen Forbes coming in. He's a guard. Forbes is a type of knockdown shooter that should really strive in Oates' offense. Six foot four, 185 pounds. Jalen Shackelford, who will also be a guard. Another high scoring guard. A lot of guards coming in. Raymond Hawkins is center. Big boy. Six foot nine, 220 pounds. Um, he was originally going to go to Buffalo, but it's following Oates to Alabama. You have a new grad transfer and James Beetle Bolden, who's a grad transfer from West Virginia. The new JC arrival will be James Rojas, who Oates said is a very talented multi-dimensional player. We're also watching Javon Quinterly, he's a point guard. And a lot of people are starting to say that he's trending in the direction towards the Crimson Tide. So stay tuned regarding Javon Quinterly. And just to kind of recap where they went, Trenton Watford committed to LSU, the very talented player right out of... Uh, Birmingham and, and Mountain Brook. And then you also have R.J. Cole, who's a point guard who had Alabama among his favorites before committing to UConn. So I, so I think when you look at the roster overall, I mean, it, it, you got to be excited if you're an Alabama Crimson Todd fan. I mean, look at what Oates has done on his resume. I mean, he, he's just been a head basketball coach at the college level for four seasons. Three out of four of those seasons, he took Buffalo to the NCAA tournament. Before that, you know, he was coaching high school. Compare that to Avery Johnson, who's a very well-established basketball coach. I mean, coaching the, he coached in the league. He played with, with the Spurs, right? But he was only 75 and 62 at Alabama from 2015 to 2019. Only reached the tournament one time. And this is what's most mind-boggling. The four years that he was here, three out of those four years, Alabama was beaten in three 
NIT first round games. Unbelievable. Unacceptable. Obviously, changes had to be be made by Greg Byrne. Avery Johnson, great guy. But I, I'm, I'm liking what I see from Nate Oates. And I think, um, you know, the speed and the tempo will be key. I mean, Buffalo averaged a ton of points last year, 84.4 points per game, which was the sixth highest average in the country. Can you imagine if Alabama was putting up 80, 90 points a game? Be, that'd be incredible. That would definitely pack Coleman Coliseum. Sound off in the comment box. What do you think about Alabama new basketball coach Nate Oates and the nucleus that he is starting to build for the Alabama basketball team? Thanks for joining us today on the Talk of Champions podcast right here on BamaInsider.com. My name is Kyle Henderson. You can reach me at Kyle at BamaInsider.com. You can also follow me on Twitter, rival underscore Kyle. All the coverage, all the action back at BamaInsider.com. Reporting, you know where, from beautiful Tuscaloosa, Alabama. This is the Talk of Champions on BamaInsider.com. Until next time, my friends, be good people out there. We'll catch up with you soon.